heyo, it's Alex Barker, and welcome to the Happy Farm D podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a subject that I'm kind of sore about. Should we as pharmacists give ourselves away for free? Is the pharmacy profession just a giant charity? Is this the reason why we are stopping ourselves from being innovative, starting businesses, and frankly being leaders in the healthcare industry versus just being followers of everyone else. With me today is my good buddy, Alex Evans. Hey, buddy. Hey. Uh, we're both entrepreneurs, obviously, and we like talking about business and entrepreneurship. And we were talking just a little bit ago about just some of the troubles of what it is like being a pharmacist and honestly kind of identifying just some of the negative beliefs we have as a profession, how it's been ingrained in us and slowed us down even. You know, one of the things I think that kicked us off, and, and here's what you, the listener, you're going to gain out of this. What I'm hoping for by the end of this is that you shift a little bit of your perspective, how you see the world, so that you can start taking some small actions today to build something towards the future, whether that is your own business, maybe it's a side hustle, a freelancing thing, or frankly, building an indispensable career so that you can move into work you love. So, you know, Alex, what actually how this first came out, you and I were talking before was what's going on with your uh, partner over in Japan, Shinpei. So if you haven't listened to that episode, go back through our archives. We did an interview with Alex, um, Shinpei about their business, about basically giving continuing education in the Japanese market to pharmacists. How about you give us a baseline? Uh, since that recording, give us an update. Where are things at? Yeah, so at the uh, time of that recording, we had just launched the uh, group called Peace, which is uh, focused on providing pharmacy uh, education, but in addition to c kind of a clinical pharmacy education we're focused on learning english and specifically on pharmacy english and we started out at a really low rate of about what equates to about 15 dollars a month for mm -hmm. per active user good job um i know so you know we did that while we're getting i was thinking we're doing that while we're getting our feet wet you know we got to get this figured out we don't know what we're doing yet either so we'll have some guinea pigs we'll get enough revenue to at least pay our bills while we get it figured out and then we can figure out how to successfully monetize it. And uh, that was about six months ago. And the monetizing still hasn't really happened. <laughs> so, you know, Shinpei and Megumi and I have had some conversations about the monetization. And for quite a while now, I've been suggesting a few different ways to monetize it. But ultimately, what it seemed like it came down to that, that I really wanted to get across even to our listeners here is that um, I think especially with Shinpei, no matter what we were doing and how much we were doing and how much we were creating, he felt like when we charge somebody, when we charge a member, that we were taking their money. So I actually even wrote it out. You know, we have Slack for like a you know shared business ideas. I even wrote it out, Shinpei, I want to make sure you know that we're not, I don't, I don't want anybody, and this, this goes for anybody who starts a business, you don't ever want to have the mindset that you're taking the customer's money because that's either one of two situations. You're not valuing yourself or you really are taking their money mm. and you're just, you know, you just are in the, the business of doing something that provides no value. And one of the things you told me previously was that you know, Shinpei has been working really hard to make this work and over deliver, over serve what it sounded like. He has. And in addition to that, it got so overwhelming for him. And, and Megumi and I have both put time into it as well. I mean, certainly there's the, we have meetings that are every other week that's a little over an hour. For me, though, I get, I do get some benefit out of the, the little over hour presentations because they are in all Japanese. So it improves my language ability gives me a chance to listen to Japanese. Um, so I'm getting some benefit, at least in that regard, but from a business perspective, certainly not. Um, mm. But it got so overwhelming for Shinpei, he actually recruited one of the members to help manage the group. And that was at about 24 members, I think, times $15 with three owners and one now oh. volunteer. So we talked well, about your calculators. Yeah, we can calculate it. 
three seventy five almost. Best dollars, it's easier, but roughly fifteen dollars. Yeah, so, three seventy five a month. Yeah, three seventy five a month, and you have Zoom and whatever other type stuff. Um, mm. So we talked about that a little bit, and basically, I told him that you know I I would think at a minimum for the work he's putting into it a few hundred dollars a month and for megumi and i about the same mm. considering the time commitment and that's not to grow the business that's to that's based on exactly what we're doing now mm -hmm. and that actually calculates out to about 40 dollars a person to make that happen now we kind of agreed in the current state that might or might not happen of 40 dollars a month however we we have been talking for quite some time about creating passive users. And I, and I think that's a big thing that for any of you out there that are wanting to get into this area, any, any kind of educational content, the way that you really, because I think the, even in the US, we have things that are really, really affordable. We have CEs where you can get an annual subscription for under a hundred dollars a year and you can access webinars and you can access monographs and they're all accredited the reason that business model works is because of passive users you can mm. get thousands of people signed up so if you're actively tutoring somebody coaching somebody working with somebody and the customer base is a limited number that price of course has to be higher to properly value your time. I think those are two important distinctions to make. Um, so we went the route of uh, taking the webinar recordings. We're gonna edit them. We have somebody actively editing them out for um, editing them, polishing them up. We'll put them into an online format. I'm adding some additional English language content and we're gonna work on adding the passive users through an online course subscription so uh, the thing that we wanted to highlight in all of these are just i think deep fundamental truths about our profession and and shinpei i know if i remember correctly you know he got his training in japan then he also came to canada to get his his degree in pharmacy and then he went back to japan so he's had a international experience learning about pharmacy, and yet he still holds I, what I believe to be a fundamental truth about us, which is we do not value our time or ourselves. We're, there's constantly research and stuff trying to prove we have value. You know, oh, look at the discharge rates. They're going down. It's because of pharmacy. And we've been publishing those things for the last, what, 50, 60 years? Probably, yeah. And yet, you know, we still believe we are the most, since we're the most trusted people, we, we, you know, we give our time away for free to the public. And we really struggle with this, I would say it's an inner belief that is just holding us back from valuing our time, our effort, and our energy. So it might be reinforced in the average, at least community pharmacy setting as well. We give away OTC recommendations for free. Yep. People often don't take them. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend I recommended a patient not take a medicine one time. And I remember she turned around and told her husband, the pharmacist says we don't have it. Let's go to he doesn't have it. Let's go to CVS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's not very uh, that's not very encouraging for us valuing mm -hmm. our time outside of work. Not at all. Not at all. You're not a doctor, right? I think we've all been told that. Um, I remember the first time I had someone yell at me, you're not a doctor. You don't even know what you're doing. I was yeah. like, well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, regardless, I don't like to get into titles. I like to get more into the idea of what's right or wrong if we want to go there. But sure. but sure. we're even catching a drug interaction or a dose mm. of error that could have, let's say it could have killed the patient. I've been in practice now for, for uh, really close to 10 years. And I would say any pharmacist that's been in practice half that long has called at least a few that could have caused serious harm to the patient. And yep. we were reimbursed nothing for that. And sometimes after we catch that error, maybe the doctor corrects the dosage or whatever, and we bill it, 
then we actually lose money on the prescription. Yeah. Because the insurance, PBM, whatever, reimburses yeah. us less than it costs. Yeah, we're, we're hit from all sides. Yeah. Right. And we can't seem to claw our way out of it either. I know that each organization association has their own plan on how we're trying to get in the front of a, we're supposed to be service payers, but like at the end of the day, you know, we're the gatekeeper. Um, and in a kingdom, you know, you don't pay the gatekeeper all that much, right? Not in comparison to like the army or the people going out there causing, directing, I suppose, the direction of, of the kingdom. In the same way, you know, we, we're fighting, I feel like a losing battle. And it's almost like we have to rewire the fundamentals of what we do. And we have to create practices in which we're the ones who are dictating what's going on, right? We're the ones dictating therapy. We're the ones in charge of the system. Um, and we need to have more pharmacy leaders like creating those avenues for pharmacists to fulfill. I, I don't know if I've, I think I've talked about this before on the podcast, but I, I we did a research project on, I think it was the like the top 30 pharmacogenomics companies that we found on Google or something like that. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we remember use Google or that. Yeah, and we looked to see how many of them out of the top 30 how many were had pharmacist founders. There were two. There were two out of 30 for a pharmacogenomics company. And um I don't remember the exact stat but I think it was something like only only 20 or 30 percent of them actually had a pharmacist on staff so you know a field that was born out of our industry is being run and operated by people outside of it i think we have to take a hard look at ourselves and basically ask the question is this who we want to be and then take ownership so what's next how do we change what do we do and i think it's doing stuff like what you're doing alex i think You've got to create the systems to make those things happen. Since that episode has aired, I have had a few people messaging me saying, oh, you know, I, I know Swedish, I know Spanish, I know Portuguese, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I'm like, nothing is stopping you. Do it. And I'll tell you what, if you want the next time, and you can, we can include this on the podcast, they can email me and I will send them the a link to the platform that I'm using to create the online course mm. and could, we can connect. And, uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot of tips yet, but we've been learning as we go along, we can at least connect. I'm always interested in meeting other pharmacists with different experiences anyway. So yeah, uh, yeah it would be interesting to, to meet those people looking to do similar things. And if you look at like, you know, you and I have mentioned, uh, I brought up a, a, a language company in Japan that hires mm. English instructors to teach pharmacy English to basically drug company executives. And they often hire pharmacists. I don't think that a pharmacist is running the company. And in fact, I even saw noticed a few mistakes in their English on their website, yet they're very successful. And have been in business for decades. And I was thinking, yeah, me and Shinpei and Megumi, we could probably, we could probably do better than that. Mm. You know, putting our heads together. But it's it certainly is that kind of mindset, like don't don't take it sitting down. Yeah, if you've ever had that thought, I think I could do better. That's usually the trigger, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> if you're if you've had that thought, that's a good thought. Michael Gerber, uh, in his book, The E-Myth, talks about the E-Myth is that everyone can be an entrepreneur, that everyone can follow this and start their own company and dream. But what most people fail to realize is that they know how to do a job. They don't know how to run a business. It's why we see things like, you know, Mike's Auto Shop or Sally's Cuts Above or you see all these people starting up businesses and they fail very quickly because they were technicians trying to be an entrepreneur. And there's so much more to business than just doing the job. 
and you see it in large corporations too, promoting the highest individual, highest mm -hmm. performing individual contributor, and they suck as a manager. <laughs> you know the idea you promote yeah. the first level of incompetence, and yeah, I mean all those theories kind of float around mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. in uh, large corporations about the management of large corporations too. Yeah, you rise to your level of incompetence. I think is the phrase I've heard as well, and. Um, I, I feel that even as a business owner, that for probably the first two years of the Happy Farm D, we had gotten to a point that I think was the max of what I could do. And it's only recently that I really feel like we are growing in strides, um, you know, doubling our revenue, growing our business, hiring more people that we've been able to grow. And it's just because of who I've surrounded myself with. Yeah. Um, finding great people is really challenging, but to find and promote within people that have proven themselves is, is the way to go. I, um, yeah, that's an interesting topic. Cause I, I even thought about like nepotism and cause one of our coaches was telling me how, how frustrated she was with one of her, consulting jobs because of like a vice president who's the son of one of the board advisors who's younger than everyone on staff and is not in charge of anything but has a title above everyone <laughs> and um obviously we don't want to go that way but you know for business the if, if you have felt like man why would anyone pay me anything or i don't think i'm good enough i won't i won't share a name but i was just talking today with a gal who got the short end of the stick she was helping out some people. They essentially didn't trust her. They didn't give her what she was due for the partnership of this business. And they started paying her less and expecting her to do the same amount of work. And you know, she had questions like, oh, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not worth it. And gosh darn it, you are. We are doctorates. And if you have a BS farm, you practically have a doctorate by this many years of practice. Goodness gracious. Send me a message. If you know of another profession that's at the doctorate level that has such negative self-beliefs that exist, that are permeated throughout the entire culture, let me know. Gosh, I, I want to know. Because um, I want to try to draw some comparisons or learn for the philosophy that they have. But um, yeah, we got a lot of roadblocks. But there's a way out, right, Alex? Yeah. And you're yeah. doing it. There absolutely <laughs> is. <laughs> what are you doing to kind of combat this with Shimpe? Uh so yeah, you know, again, we had we had quite a few conversations about about our goals for the business. And I think that was really important not to misunderstand each other's goals. Mm. Um, and so I think for him, he's he was he is and I think it's an excellent goal and it's not uh, like different from my goals, but he wanted to create a supportive community of learners. Um, but that track had gotten so far down just being supportive that then it felt like, I think that from my understanding felt like, well, I'm not sure if we can really take their money. We're just here to support them. Mm. And so I had, I've kind of said like my, my goal really is to, to create a business. And, and I think we've mentioned before, but certainly um, I do have plans to, to move to Japan at some point yeah. here, the year after. But um, while I am there, if this particular project is going well and it's, it looks like uh, it's a business that we can grow into more, then I'm interested in spending my time some of my time while I'm in Japan working to grow this business and that could include a lot of directions but I think to get us to the point of it being a business I mean you got you have to have some revenue you have to have it you have to have some money to even hire people to edit videos or advertise or, or whatnot um, so our I guess our mutual goals were that he Shinpei really wants to reach as many pharmacists as possible mm. with this program and that's just not possible in an active setting unless you have a lot of people working for you and at that point you have to 
pay those people to work for you. So you need the revenue. In my mind, one of the easiest places to get started really is an online course. We offer the recordings of the webinar. We offer the copies of the presentations. I've added some English content, a pronunciation dictionary, for example, pronouncing drug names and medical terms that could be helpful for foreign language learners. Um, just added a, like a one slide presentation on hypertension in English with the transcription, adding those kinds of things, and then tapping into his existing network of Japanese pharmacists wanting to learn English. And if many of them pay a small amount of money, it still produces revenue we need to grow the, to grow the business. So I think there's a lot to be learned just from that. Um, if you have a business partner, I think you got to talk about expectations. Absolutely. Yeah. That was a learning lesson for me. Yeah. Yeah, because when you're not aligned, it's really easy for one person to feel like they're getting the short end of the stick. Um, it happens in every relationship. Any married people out there? <laughs> um, it is certainly, that's not like the way I, I felt at all, but also didn't want it to go down that road. And I didn't want Shinpei to feel that way as well, either. Like I'm strong arming right. something and then the producing it's, revenue or something. You know, we just had to, we had to get our, our, and Megumi too. We we all three of us needed to kind of create a direction that we can all decide is a is a direct good direction for the business. But I think it's a very interesting reflection because it showcases, I think, what we all have as pharmacists, which is frankly to go above and beyond. Like you want whoever your customer is to be really happy. You know. Um, I think every pharmacist no nah, not every but the vast majority of people that i talk to that especially those that want to get into business they want to ensure that what they have is really high quality yeah um and their standards that are set and sometimes unfortunately what that means is perfectionism right and we overcommit, we overburden ourselves with way too much um and it's un unattainable unachievable once again, another quintessential quality of a pharmacist, a perfectionist. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, and it's, it's not wrong. I mean, we want patients to be safe, but at the same time, if you're going to take a risk. Like you got to be willing to fail. And that's a hard belief to change to all of a sudden think, okay, I've got someone's life in my hands and now I'm going to go build this business. And you know what? If we fail, we fail. Like, yeah, we learn lessons along the way. And yeah, it's very hard to adopt. It's almost like, you know, trying to learn how to ride a bike when you're 65, 70. It's possible. It's just, it's, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. It's going to be a challenge. Well, this was a fun discussion and I'm excited to see what happens next with you guys. So you're, you were at, you said you had 24 members, 25 almost. About 24 so, active members. And then we'll be adding the online course and, Eventually, mm. probably adding a uh, an option once we kind of work out the way to do so. Work uh, add an option for users to be able to listen to the webinar live, but mm. they're not active participants as well. So, well, this is exciting for me. I think everyone likes pro process updates because you know you can look look back on these and think, "Oh wow, I was so young, so <laughs> foolish." Yeah. But look at me now. Now I'm here and I'm loving it. Yeah. So thanks for sharing that. I appreciate yeah. it. So I hope uh, I hope one day we'll be looking back on this when I'm in Japan. Right. The business is successful. Maybe we're doing corporate corporate English classes for drug companies. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you have a desire to go to Japan like I do, um, hey Alex is Alex is your guy. He's going to have a company one day in Japan. And I have that means I have a friend in Japan, so I can come right. and visit you. That's right. We were just talking about how I don't have friends in Japan, Alex. Yeah, and that, well, you will. You will one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's got me excited. So your business has to be a success for me to be successful in traveling to Japan. That's true. I'm, yeah, there's some motivation for, for both of us. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, let us know. Write us a review. If, 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 if you're not loving it, hey, let us know. You got to know how we got to improve if you don't tell us. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.